Hi, in this video we're going to look at how to generate an API key for working with Google Maps for Android applications. So to begin with, you want to point your browser to code.google.com slash APIs slash console. And if you haven't logged in with your Google ID and password, you'll need to do that first. Once you do, you'll be brought to a page that will look similar to this, although of course it may change in the future. So I'm going to begin by clicking on Create Project, and then from here we want to scroll down until you find the Google Maps Android API version 2. Now I want you to pay close attention here because there's also a Google Maps API version 2. We want Google Maps Android API version 2. So just be careful and make sure you select this one because if you choose the other one, your app will not work. So you want to make sure it's the Google Maps version for Android. And I'm going to turn that on. Right, and then it's going to take you through Terms of Service, which you can read through and then agree and accept. Okay, next we're going to go to the API Access link, and we're going to choose a simple API Access. So I'm going to create a new Android key, and in order to generate this, we need the SHA-1 Certificate Fingerprint for your application. So in order to do this, we need to open up your computer's command prompt or console window. So first I'm going to demonstrate how to do this on a Mac, and then I will also include instructions and demonstration on how to do this on a Windows development environment. So for the Mac, I'm going to open up Terminal. Now to do that, you can open up your applications and then and then under the utilities you're going to find terminal so you're going to open that up so my terminal window looks like this and then we're going to type in a command in order to access the certificate fingerprints so i have the command written out in notepad or a text editor so that we can see it a little better than what you're going to see it on the terminal so this is the code that you want to enter. And this is the location for where the key store is for Eclipse. So I'm just going to copy this whole line and I'm going to go to my terminal and I'm going to paste that in and then press enter. Now if it asks for a password, the default password is Android, all lowercase. And so when I type this in, you won't see any movement on the screen, right? The cursor stays in the same position. So I'm going to press enter and now it generates the certificate fingerprints and the one that I'm interested in is the SHA-1. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to go back to my browser window and I'm going to paste this in. And it's also looking for at the end of that a semicolon with the name of the package name for the application. So I'm going to say com.example and then click create. Right, and then we have Android key created successfully and the API key that you have here is what you're going to need in your application. So I'm going to copy that I'm going to keep this window open just in case I need to get back to it and copy this API key again. But you can always log back into your Google account and get to your API key generations. So be sure to keep a copy of this because we're going to use that in our manifest file for our Maps application. The following are steps on how to generate an SHA-1 key on a Windows development environment using Windows 7. 
it. And within Eclipse, I'm going to go to Window and Preferences. And then once you're in Preferences, you want to expand the Android group and click Build. And then from here, you should have a default debug key store. And this information you want to copy so that we can paste it in when we're ready to use it. So I'm just going to copy this in. And then we're finished with this. So I'm just going to click Cancel to get out of here. Next, you want to open up your command prompt. And you can do that by going to your Windows icon and typing in CMD. So then we have a command prompt here. Now we need to get the path to the key tool. Now the key tool is stored in your Java folder. So if you go to your hard drive of your computer and you open up your program files folder and in your program files folder you're going to go down and find the Java folder and you want the Java development kit folder for whatever version you have and you're going to go into the bin folder and inside the bin folder you should find the key tool application so scroll down and find keytool.exe just going to drag the keytool exe file into my command window so now I have a reference to where this key tool is. So when I run this, it's going to execute. It's going to go out to this folder and find the key tool. And now I have some other code that I'm going to add in. So I'm going to put a space and then I'm going to paste some text in there. Now what I recommend you do is to create a, a notepad document with the text in here so that if something goes wrong or you realize that you typed in something wrong it'll be easy for you to copy and paste back into the command line so this is the code that you're going to use list dash v this is for verbose and if you're reading some other instructions uh, they may leave this out and if you're using java 7 then what will happen is you won't get the md5 fingerprint you'll get a different one and that won't work so you have to have the MD5 so in order to be able to get that listing in Java 7 we need to use the verbose flag so what uh, this part right here paste in the path to your debug key store this is what we just copied out of Eclipse so when we went into uh, the properties so you would replace that with the location of your key store and then we have a dash now this all wraps don't put these on separate lines you'll want to make sure that this text is all one long line because if you press enter you may have some you will have some problems with it so make this all one long line and if you can always check it by going to format and taking off the word wrap and making sure that everything is all on one long line here. Okay, so once you have this code in, I'm just going to copy this from my editor and I'm going to come back here. I'm going to make sure there's a space after this double quote and I'm going to right click and choose paste and then press enter. Okay, so now it gives me, you can see what the verbose listing does. Uh, if on Java 7 we would have just had this SHA1 listing by default it wouldn't have given us the MD5 so now we want to copy this and it's kind of hard to do in the command prompt if I right click and choose select all and I'm just gonna do a real quick control C and when you do it sort of unselects everything so you think it may not have worked but if you do and you go back into your notepad document and paste so after I paste this in you'll want to copy and paste the SHA1 key into the Google API's console. 